first we're going to go to Peter Gay with the stories making the news this week. Peter Gay, I know you got some interesting stuff. Hi, Edra Enko. We begin our top news segment with a brief update from the RVIPF regarding a group of some, well, at least 12 illegal migrants who were detained at Barris Creek in Virgin Gorda on a Monday afternoon. That group, the RVIPF says, involves several children and is believed to be comprised mainly of Haitians. This is not something new here in the territory, Edru Enko. However, at this time, we do not have much more information, but according to officials from the RVIPF, the Immigrations and Customs Department who participated in this, this, this detention, they are still searching for some additional persons who are part of this group who are believed to have separated from the group at the time. Now, moving on to other matters, the big issue that a lot of eyes and ears are watching and keeping their ears open for in the upcoming week is the agenda for the House of Assembly when it resumes on April 18. Now, there are several issues that are expected to be coming out of that session, starting with the Premier's tabling of two of the outstanding audited financial reports. Now, we understand that those two reports that are to be tabled are to be for the financial years 2010 and 2011. And those two financial reports are from the previous VIP administration. Edu Enkel, you will recall that the opposition leader, Andrew Foy, has been one of those persons who have been clamoring for the tabling of the outstanding financial reports, which date back from 2007 to 2015. And so once these two are tabled, we hope to see other reports, especially those coming out of the current administration. And so also on the agenda of the House of Assembly for next week, are several questions which will be put to the Premier by opposition leader Andrew Foy, starting with the $25 million at line of credit that the government received from First Caribbean International Bank. Mr. Foy will be asking the Premier how much of that amount has been expended and for what reasons so far from that $25 million line of credit. The opposition leader will also be seeking answers from the Premier on the proposed expansion for the TB Letsum International Airport, which continues to be a hot button issue here in the territory. And so Mr. Foy will be seeking to find out from the Premier the total amount of money that has so far been approved by Cabinet for the proposed expansion of the airport and whether or not the, pro the project proposal uh, sticks to the tenets of the protocols for effective financial management. Mr. Foy will also be asking the Premier if any negotiations have begun with any contractors and if so, with whom and by when the commencement date for the expansion project is expected to take place. Also on the cards for the questions to be asked of the Premier in the House of Assembly on April 18, Edu Enka, are questions pertaining to BVI Airways. Now, Mr. Foy will be asking the Premier how much of the $7 million investment by the government into this startup airline, which is expected to provide direct connectivity between Miami and the territory, has been dispersed and to who and when BVI Airways will start flying. He also wants to find out if any additional agreement have been agreed on or signed between BVI Airways and the government since that $7 million investment, or if any additional funding, equity or investment is being sought or considered by the government, Edru Enko. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that some audited reports are coming forward. That's something that we need to have happen for a while now. And so that's a good sign. And as you mentioned, Peter Gay, I'm hoping that additional uh, audited reports will be coming forward uh, in, a, in a not too distant future, in the near future, as a matter of fact, because I think it's important that we know where we stand financially. Uh, I am uh, really interested in the questions as well, I think, uh, from what the real report states there certainly seem to be some really good questions yes, about um, 
the the air the airport expansion, the the airline, the the credit, the credit and the, particularly the credit facility. Uh, how is that working, and how is that money being managed and, and used to to pay back bills and 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 you know have that that fund coming and going so that the 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 government doesn't uh, continue to experience the cash flow problem that has plagued it. Uh, this not just not just this government, but governments for for uh, many many years. I think the, the the feeling that there is no money doesn't come from the fact that there is no money. It comes from the fact that there's a cash flow problem mm -hmm. how, based on how the money is collected um, by the government. So the and line. Remember to add to Enka, this particular question comes at a critical juncture where there's this big fuss involving the governor and the government and the govern governor demanding certain funds from the government. So that too should be able to help the territory to understand, you know, where some of those funds, that $1.8 million falls in this credit line. Absolutely. Well. So those are, those are excellent questions. And of course, I'm looking forward to hearing the answers and to pay attention to the House of Assembly on the 18th of April. All right, Edra Enka. Well, those are, yes, significant and interesting questions as it pertains to issues of national interest for the territory, but it does not stop there. The opposition leader will also be placing questions to Communications and Works Minister Mark Vanterpool, and at the top of the list, the cruise pier and park. He wants to know what's the status of this audit that the Premier ordered into the cruise pier and park. Uh, when did it commence? When is it supposed to, to end? And you will recall that the audit was what came at the end of uh, all the concerns being raised about the overspend of some uh, $30 million on this uh, cruise pier and park project, which is a significant investment for the territory and, territory and has, has added value for the territory. But at the end of the day, in the absence of a commission of inquiry to provide those answers, this audit is expected to do so. And so the opposition leader will be seeking answers on the progress being made by this audit if it, if it is at all completed. He also wants specific details on the marine side as well as the land side of the pier park. You know, all the construction, legal, project management, specialist use, materials, civil works, contracts and professional fees that are a part of this project. And another project that is also stirring up some controversy in the territory that he will be pushing the communications and works minister to provide answers on is the rehabilitation that's planned for the Virgin Gorda dock facility over there. So he wants to know when public meetings will be held in the 9th district to provide answers, critical answers on the plans for this project, the cost of it, when it will start, when it is expected to end. And so those are just some of the big questions that the opposition leader will be putting to both the Premier and the Communications and Works Minister come Tuesday, April 18, in the House of Assembly, Edu Enkan. So it will make interesting watching and listening. Yes, good questions. Good report, uh, Peter Gay. You come. All right, just one more issue to just inform our viewers about as it pertains to matters coming up in the House of Assembly. Everyone will recall, Edu Enka, that the former chairman of the BVI HSA, Bishop John Klein, was forced to resign in January under controversial circumstances. And so there's been an absence in terms of chairmanship at the helm of the BVI HSA up until this point. But his deputy, uh, Mrs. Ayana glasgow Liburd is expected to be approved by the House of Assembly when the Health Minister uh, puts forward that motion also on the 18th to take over as chairman of the BVI HSA for a period of two years. I feel like the, uh, the country is moving, moving ahead. A lot is being done. Good questions are being asked. Uh, yes, we do need to know. I don't think there's anything wrong with having overspent uh, for the cruise ship pair. It's a beautiful pair and it's really added value to the territory. We've had a tremendous increase in, in, in tourists since the pair was uh, in, op is in operation. But, uh, you know, we need to know if, you know, if they build uh, some, the kiosks more sturdy and it costs the extra 20 or 30 million dollars, I don't see anything wrong with explaining Why? to the public, uh, you know, these are the things that, we, these are the changes that we made and so this is what costs the money. We need to account for the money. And I think we should have done it uh, 
immediately a long time ago yeah. instead of having to go through uh, the long process. It would have been better for the government and better for the public. And what, giving rise to all kinds of speculations and rumors and so on. And yes, yes, absolutely. It should have been done long ago. So I'm glad to see um, Andrew, um, Honorable um, Foy. Foy is asking about it and hope, we hope to get some, some good answers, good responses, and have those uh, issues move forward and out of the way. And Absolutely. so let's just uh, let me remind our viewers, Edra and Kala, of course, as it pertains to what's going to happen in the HOA next week and, of course, other stories that are of interest to you. You can check out JTV on Channel 55, our YouTube channel, Facebook, and our website, jtvlive.net.